The majority of the Committee on Commerce and Consumer Affairs already preferred House Bill 1589FN, an act requiring background checks for all firearm sales. Having considered the same report, the same for the following amendment, and the recommendation has been built on to pass with amendment. The House will be in order. Representatives Edward A. Butler for the majority of the committee. The minority of the committee, having considered the same and being unable to agree with the majority, report with the following resolution. Resolved that it is inexpedient to legislate. Representative Laura M. Jones for the minority of the committee. The majority committee amendment is number 03718. It's printed in House Record 9A on pages 587 and 588. The question is on the majority committee amendment. For what purpose does the member rise? Madam Speaker, I'd like to make a uh, motion. Uh, please state your motion. I would like to make a motion to redefinite uh, postpone this 1589. Uh, indefinite postponement is a higher order motion. Uh, so, uh, Representative Valdosaro moves indefinite postponement on House Bill 15. Representative Quintus is recognized for a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Since the motion before the House was the committee amendment, is a motion to amend a higher priority than indefinite postponement? Uh, no, the order of preference of motions is. Um, the member is absolutely correct. Uh, and the uh, motion to uh, the amendment is a higher priority motion. So the question before the House is the, uh, is the committee amendment. For what purpose does the member rise? Madam, uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to table it. Representative Balasaro moves to lay House Bill 1589 on the table. This is a non-debatable motion. This will be a division vote. Will members please take their seats?
Would you now join me in pressing the green button to table this bill? The question before the House is the motion to lay House Bill 1589 on the table. This is a division vote. If you're in favor, press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. Chair recognizes Representative Butler for a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. If you know, as I know, that uh, much work has gone into this bill and the amendments have been indeed uh, vetted and deliberated through the committee. And if you also know that there, although this is a challenging issue, that there are many people on both sides that expect us to deliberate and vote on this issue, however it comes out at the end, would you go against the table motion? Thank you. The question before the House is the motion to lay House Bill 1589 on the table. This is a division vote. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. <coughs> Voting stations are open for 30 seconds.
so that low-income people, limited-income single parents, and young adults just out of school will be less able to afford a firearm that they wish to purchase as a means to self-defense. Low-income citizens have a right to protect themselves. Single parents have a right to protect themselves. Young adults have a right to protect themselves. By slicing away at the ability of citizens to exercise their rights, this amendment seeks to contribute toward the ultimate goal of removal of firearms and therefore the removal of self-protection from the hands of citizens. Do not contribute to the slow death of our free society. Join me in voting no to this amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, the member yields to a question. The member does not yield. The question before the House is the committee amendment on House Bill 1589. The chair recognizes the member from Hampton, Representative Munns, to speak in support of the committee amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to, I rise to speak in favor of this amendment. I support it because New Hampshire has a right to do what we believe is necessary to protect our citizens. We owe it to all law-abiding citizens to do whatever we can to stop even one person who should not own a gun from being able to acquire one. And if in the process we are able to prevent just one senseless shooting that saves just one life, then our efforts will have been very worthwhile. I, along with all of you, respect the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution and the right of my fellow citizens who wish to own a firearm to do so. I also respect the First Amendment protects our right of free speech, and the Fourth Amendment, which protects us from unreasonable searches and seizures. Freedom of speech does not, however, permit someone to yell fire in a crowded theater. And while I might think that having to empty my pockets, remove my belt, take off my shoes, remove my laptop, and subject my personal belongings and myself to an x-ray screen is not only an unreasonable search, but unnecessary because I am a law-abiding citizen, we all agree to subject ourselves to this routine every day at every airport in the country because we know that it is meant to protect all of us. Long ago, we the people, through our elected representatives, decided that just as is the case with the First and the Fourth Amendments, some limits on the rights of an individual to own a firearm were appropriate so that the shared and common interest of all of us could be served. Current federal and state law requires that any seller of a firearm who is a federal firearms licensee must conduct a background check on any individual who is purchasing a firearm from them unless that purchaser has a valid permit to carry. Prime background checks are also required for all inter inter interstate internet purchases. That is not unlike the concept of requiring anyone who wishes to fly to go through a security screening. It is also not without precedent. Doctors, daycare providers, and many other professionals are also required to complete background checks because we believe it is the public's best interest. This amendment extends the requirement for a background check to any commercial sale of a firearm within the state of New Hampshire if it occurs at a gun show or any other commercial sale, including sales at flea markets or over the inter internet within the state. And that makes sense since in most, if not all, commercial transactions, the two parties to the transaction do not know each other, certainly not well enough to know whether the purchaser is prohibited from owning a firearm. That being the case, it is in the public's best interest to ensure that a check is done to ensure that this individual is, in fact, able to own a firearm. This bill does not require a background check for a sale or transfer of a gun between two individuals who know each other. If you wish to sell or transfer a gun to someone you know, you will, not be, you, will, you will be able to do so without a background check. Finally, there is nothing in this bill that would create a national or state firearms registry. In fact, the bill specifically includes language that says, and I quote, nothing in this chapter shall be construed to require or authorize any state county or local law enforcement agency to establish or maintain a registry of firearms sold or transferred in accordance with this chapter, end quote. This amendment is a straightforward and common sense piece of legislation. It sends a clear message to everyone in our state and our country 
that New Hampshire not only respects the rights of law-abiding citizens to own a firearm, but we take seriously the responsibilities that come along with it. I urge you to join me in voting for this amendment so that we can have a full debate on the bill and ultimately refer it to the Criminal Justice Committee with a recommendation of ought to pass as amended. And Madam Speaker, in the interest of time, I will not take any questions. The member does not yield to questions. The question before the House is the majority committee report of ought to pass as amended on House Bill 1589. Are you ready for the question? A division has been requested. For what purpose does the member rise? Madam Speaker, is it possible with this amendment, many of us got over 500, maybe more emails and calls, that someone from the committee can come up here and answer questions on this amendment. Um, at the committee, um, the member from the committee that was representing the committee position did rise to speak, did not wish to take questions. I will say that the amendment does, does replace the entire bill. There are many, many, many speakers lined up for uh, our cast has suggested that you see if they are willing to take your question. The question before the House is the committee amendment. Is it? Roll call. Roll call. Representative Umberger requests a roll call that is sufficiently seconded. So will members please take their seats? This will be a roll call vote. Good. Really? Do you support this? What? No, I don't. Well, oh, you support it? Oh, all right. No. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Commercial gun sales. 
and that we need to pass this amendment in order to have a full discussion of this matter. <coughs> and if I know that this bill prohibits a gun registry. Finally, Madam Speaker, if I know that an overwhelming majority of our New Hampshire friends and neighbors polled in numerous surveys support criminal background checks for all commercial gun sales, would I now push the green button? Thank you. The question before the House is the committee an amendment on House Bill 1589. This is a roll call vote. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. Voting stations are open for 30 seconds. Thank you, Madam Speaker. There's a TV show on right now called The Blacklist. And in it, a character played by the actor James Spader plays the part of the Archie Hill. Let the member please suspend. The House of being Order. The member has a right to be heard. I would ask you, if, even if you're on your way out the door, please keep it quiet so that the, those who wish to hear can hear. The member may proceed. The show. Stand now, 
And if they are, then we want to tread very lightly before we uh, take this momentous step of changing them. So I urge you to please vote for the floor amendment. Thank you. The question before the House is the full floor amendment number 0467 on House Bill 1589. And I ask for a roll call. The chair recognizes Representative. The chair recognizes Representative Butler to speak. The chair recognizes the member from London, Derek, Representative Balbasaro, to speak in support of the floor amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Fellow representatives, I was honored to sit in the Congress committee and where this amendment came forward by um, the ones that disagreed with the amendment. And of course, I was kind of disgusted I went on. On moving the question, debate was stopped, votes should happen, and I had a lot of issues. Uh, why? On the Mason rules that went on. Um, Would the member please suspend? The member is recognized to speak to the floor amendment, not to the activities of the committee. The yes. okay. member is recognized to speak to the floor amendment. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. The, uh, this amendment came up in the committee, and of course, didn't go anywhere. Um, we discussed it, and uh, like anything else, they were determined, in my opinion, to move forward without even looking at the laws of New Hampshire. This amendment is a no-brainer because many of us know that there are more murders that go on with knives. Are we going to, is that next? Okay, because just in uh, the country here, in 2012 time frame, you're looking at about 1,694 murders with knives. You're looking at also fists and feet, 728 murders. You're looking at rifles, 356, those scary AR-15 that don't even say they were regular rifles. We're going to vote on something here today. This amendment is a no-brainer. We all know we live in the safest state in the country. Why should we be studying what we're doing right instead of using similar language that they use in California and other states? That's what we're doing here. We're not like Michigan, Detroit, you know, Detroit there, or Chicago, New York. They got strict, strict gun laws, and you see what's happening. China, no guns at all in China. More murders with knives. The bottom line is that the criminal wants you, they're going to get you, whether it be with a gun or a knife. But let's not make criminals of our citizens in New Hampshire. This study here, amendment, take a look at what we've done over the years here in New Hampshire. Compared to other states, we've done a lot of things right here. We gave people the right to protect themselves. There was a study with over 3 million Crimes have stopped throughout the country with people that own guns. So I'm asking you here to support this amendment. Let's not be strict laws like San Francisco and other states. We already know it's not working. It's broken. So why would we want to fix something here in New Hampshire that is not broken? I'm asking you to support this here. Let's get a study committee before we make criminals and make our gun dealers go against federal law by taking in a gun and get the deal going through, they give it back, they gotta do a, a, another check on you. But this bill that amendment passed, they no. Okay, so I don't think that the Congress Committee really understands RSA 159. Thank you. Will the member yield to a question? Yes. The member yields, Representative Copeland, you may inquire. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for taking the question. With regards to the study committee, don't you think the root of the problem which the study committee could look at is when we fill out the federal form 4473 and we answer those questions, isn't it kind of a, a false leading process for people with the name checks that if I lie on that form? 
and I check off that I'm not mentally defective, or uh, I'm not a convicted felon, or I'm not a citizen of the United States, or any of the other questions that are on there. If I lie on that and commit perjury, nobody's going after me for that. Shouldn't we be looking at the root of the problem and dealing with the perjury aspects of 4473? Because I can lie on my 4473 and still get my gun check positive. And I can buy a gun. All I have to do is lie. So shouldn't we be looking at the root of the problem in the study committee? Uh, that's, you know, that's a great question. I agree with you. And I know that you're a former police, and I'll touch on something in a second. We should be looking at the criminals. You're right. I just bought a rifle uh, about a week ago. And when you buy a rifle in New Hampshire at a gun store, um, I bought a Russian made gun. I'm a collector. I like that. You know, and I like to shoot, you know, Russian and uh, Vietnam and Chinese type rifles. But I filled out the form. And you're right, there's a lot of questions in there. I could have lied on that. They would have never known as long as I did not have a felony conviction. And they would have never, ever known. There were HIPAA regulations and other stuff that's coming into play. Now, to get back on the police here, the MGD, also, you know, there's this survey that was brought up at the committee with the police. Overwhelmingly, the response here, are you either current or former retired that goes into questions on law enforcement? Overwhelmingly support what we do here in New Hampshire. But nobody wanted to look at this in the committee. That's why I felt they should have went to criminal justice, because that's where they know the laws. Well, the member yields to the The member yields. So then you would agree with me that the name check process gives a full sense of security over all the people. If people out there filling out the form are going to lie about it, and we're not going to prosecute them. Oh, without a doubt, I think it's a false sense of security. Uh, some people in this room want to do the right thing. They feel like we've got to do the right thing. But really, all you're doing is making us harder for a law-abiding citizen, and the criminals are protected. They got to get guns in order to do what they want. Will the member yield to another question? The member yields representative who will remain fire. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I guess this is the would you believe. Would you believe that all those denials who have filled out that form properly and actually committed a felony? Yet we don't prosecute but a small, small, small percentage, somewhere less than 4% of the people who are denied um, as felonies. The rest of those um, need to be examined and see whether they were actually real denials. Yeah, I, I would definitely believe that. And I, uh, there's no doubt in my mind, because if you look at the murders and you look at the study that came in from Massachusetts, you know, um, a lot of guns uh, are not from New Hampshire, okay? They're Massachusetts guns, just like in India, and commit crimes. But if you look at what the police have said on their study, considering the particulars of a recent tragedies like Newtown and Aurora, what level of impact do you think a legally armed citizen could have made? And then it says, choose a statement. 80%, if now 11,215 police officers brought the country against this, Casualties would likely have been reduced. They would have never thought it. Never ever in a million years. So what we're doing here is a feel-good attack against law-abiding citizens. Let's do but I would remind the member that the question is on the amendment. The question before the House is the floor amendment, 04679 House Bill 1589. The chair recognizes the member from Manchester, Representative Allen Clark, to speak in support of the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I do speak on the same side in support of the floor amendment as the previous gentleman who spoke, but I think I come at it from a slightly different perspective. From the comments I just heard, I believe the previous person would want us to study this and ultimately kill it. I don't quite look at it that way. I believe the study committee is appropriate because we don't know everything about this. When I came in here this morning, I didn't know it was going to be this amendment, but it seems to me this is a way for us to resolve temporarily an issue that has left a lot of blood on the floor, just like the Stand Your Ground bill did last year. Went through a lot of, what's that German phrase? Sturm und Drang. 
<laughs> and ultimately, the bill, of course, was not approved, but a lot of ill will had been created in the process. Now, we cannot ever refer what the other body is going to do, but we certainly can refer, refer to what the people want us to do. And I have received so many emails for and against this bill that I think the people want something to be done. But I'm not sure they want the provisions of the amendment that just passed done. So I actually would speak in favor of the study committee not to kill the bill, but to try to ultimately come out with the best solution possible. I don't think now is the time to do this. So I think we would be wise voting for the study committee amendment, which would in fact replace the amendment we have just passed. So not because I want the bill killed. I was one of the three from that other party that voted for Andrew Gravity Bill last year, but because I really think there's a lot more to be looked at and we can never go wrong by looking at something this evocative of passions. We can never go wrong by looking at something in the fullness of time a bit more. So I will vote for this one. Will the member yield to a question? The member does not yield. The question before the House is Floor Amendment 0467 on House Bill 1589. <coughs> The chair recognizes the final speaker, the member from Hart's location, Representative Butler, to speak in opposition to the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My uh, comments are as they were before. The bill before us, the amendment that we just passed, um, is what our constituents have been telling us about, uh, calling us about, emailing us about, and for which they want, I believe, um, a vote up or down um, after a full-throated uh, debate. Um, I don't disagree that a study committee would be a great thing, and I would be happy to co-sponsor such a bill in the next session, but it's not something that should replace the amendment that we just passed. I ask you to vote down this amendment and push the red button. Will the member yield to a question? The member does not yield. The question before the House is Floor Amendment 0467 on House Bill 1589. <laughs> The question before the House is uh, Floor Amendment 0467 on House Bill 1589. Are you ready for the question? Oh. Representative Jones requests a roll call. Is that sufficiently seconded? It is sufficiently seconded. This will be a roll call vote. Full members, please take their seats.
and which ones we could do better in our own uniquely New Hampshire way. Would I now press the green button to support the floor amendment? The question before the House is floor amendment 0467 on House Bill 1589. This is a roll call vote. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. Chair recognizes Representative Butler for a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. If I know that the time for this amendment is not now, would I press the red button? The question before the House is for Amendment 0467 on House Bill 1589. This is a roll call vote. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. Voting stations are open for 30 seconds.
on House Bill 1589. Question before the house is: Ought to pass 
pass as amended on House Bill 1589. Representative Butler is recognized for a motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, at this time, it would be appropriate to uh, table this uh, bill as amended so that we can review the contents of the amendment and possibly make changes, and if uh, we choose, bring it back for further uh, debate. Uh, a motion to table would be in order. I would just remind everyone that today is the deadline for acting on early bills. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm so moved. Representative Butler moves to lay House Bill 1589 on the table. Uh, Representative Balfour is recognized for an inquiry of the chair. You stated half of what my inquiry was going to be, that in fact this is the final day, since this bill would have to go to a second committee. But I was going to ask you just to elaborate what the ramifications of coming back later would be. And I believe you'll tell us that it would take a simple majority to uh, pass the bill, but it would take two-thirds to suspend the rules. So if, in fact, this does not come back today on the table, it effect, in effect, it would take two-thirds to get it passed. Is that not correct? And, in fact, I was going to correct your first statement that today's the last day. It is the deadline for early bills, which means that if the bill were to be laid on the table, which requires a majority vote. It would require only a majority vote to take it off the table, but it would then require a two-thirds vote to act on it because we would be past the deadlines. So the question before the House is the motion to lay House Bill 1589 on the table. This will be a division vote. Will members please take their seats? I'd ask members to please take your seats. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Madam Speaker, thank you. If we pass the table in motion, and they want to bring it back today, for one, how are they going to work on it? And if they work on this bill, wouldn't they have to have a public hearing on it, or no? Yeah. Well, I would say that as uh, there were members that brought yeah, forward an amendment for a study committee that was germane to the bill, that if an amendment, if the bill was majority asked to take it off the table, and if there was another amendment relative to a study committee, that would be germane. So it would be in order. You're not going to get the votes for that. If this motion passes the tabling motion, could the committee or an individual come back with a substantive motion that had nothing to do with the study committee, but was in effect a different form of the bill as originally introduced or as amended by the committee amendment? Or must we only have an, an amendment that's germane to the study committee absent a two-third vote to suspend the rules on germaneness. Well, as always, if anyone brings in an amendment that's germane, uh, it does not have to be germane to the amendment that, just to the amendment that we just adopted, then it would be in order. The amendment that we just adopted was germane to the original bill. Further parliamentary? You may inquire. Uh, if this motion passes, uh, would a motion to indefinitely postpone be in order, and if so, what would be the consequences? Um, if this mo if the motion to lay on the table passes, then the bill would be laid on the table, and no further action could be taken until, um, unless and until a motion was successful to remove it from the table. Thank you. The chair recognizes Representative Valancourt for an inquiry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I had suspected the end game was to bring it back today. But is it true that if the, that is the end game, it could be brought back since we have so many bills before us at 8 or 9 o'clock tonight when very few people are still here? Is that possible? Um, Representative Galford, I am very honest when I say I truly hope we will not be here at 7 or 8 o'clock tonight. However, we will be here until our business is done because we are on deadline. But the question was, could this be brought back at the very end of the day, at a very late hour, when very few people are here besides such important? That would be up to the decision of the body, because it would first have to be removed from the table by the majority of those present and voting. The chair recognizes Representative Elliott for an parliamentary inquiry. Madam, if this bill passes, would a motion be made to reconsider the vote and urge the House to vote red? Would that be an order? Have I answered all of the parliamentary? Representative Porter. 
Sorry, it's a good learning lesson for everybody. Oh, thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, if, with an indefinite postponement motion, if passed, would that prevent us from simply considering a bill to have a study committee about this issue, or would it also prevent us from considering any legislation along the lines of uh, the committee amendment or the original bill? If the bill were to, if a bill, this bill or any other bill were to be indefinitely postponed, that prevents that topic and things substantially similar from coming back again, even this year. All right, so the question before the House is the motion to lay House Bill 1589 on the table. And this is a provision vote. Um, the chair recognizes, uh, this is a division vote. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. Chair recognizes Representative Shirtlip for a parliamentary inquiry. Members should be in their seats. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, if I know that all the votes we've taken on this bill today have been very close, and Madam Speaker, if I think there's merit in this legislation, and placing it on the table will give those that support the legislation an opportunity to improve this bill. Would I now push the green button and table House Bill 1589? Thank you, Madam Speaker. The question before the House is the motion to lay House Bill 1589 on the table. This is a division vote. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If Opposed, you'll press the red button. The chair recognizes Representative Chandler for a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, if I know this bill has had many hearings, much publicity, and all kinds of things, and it is far too late to consider any other amendments to this bill, and I know we took a positive action by adopting a floor amendment, and, and if we vote against tabling, we have an to pass this amended motion before us, which we can take. Would I now push the red button opposed to the table? The question before the House is the motion to lay House Bill 1589 on the table. This is a division vote. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. Voting stations are open for 30 seconds. If I, like many of you, believe that we should, I mean, if you, like me, were to believe that we should definitely postpone this, um, would you, uh, would a, um, no, I'm sorry, uh, Madam Speaker, would a, I would like to move to indefinitely postpone this bill right now. Representative Lambert moves indefinitely postponement on House Bill 1589. And it's recognized to speak to this motion. Sorry, I don't want to tell them up there. I was going to speak, or I wanted to definitely postpone. Um, I apologize, Madam Speaker, everyone in the House, we've had a lot of conversation about this bill. 
I've received a lot of email, you've all received a lot of email. Uh, for all of the people who sent you an email telling you to vote in favor of this bill, they didn't send you an email to study it. It was passive or kill it. I believe that the study committee isn't going to be in anyone's best interest. We need to go and kill this bill right now. If you agree with me, please press the green button to indefinitely postpone this bill. The question before the House is the motion to indefinitely postpone House Bill 1589. Chair recognizes the member from Manchester. Representative Steve Downport to speak in opposition to the motion. Madam Speaker, despite all the controversy, despite everything that we might do here, despite our differences, we retain a sense of honor. How could I retain one shred of honor if after speaking to you, promising that studying this would be a good thing, that I was not just doing that to kill the bill. How could anybody who voted for that amendment retain any honor by now voting to indefinitely postpone this bill? I value my honor even more than this bill, so I will not vote for indefinitely postpone, which as we all know, is not just killing a bill, but putting a knife through it. Don't dishonor yourself, vote against this motion. The question before the House is,
133 have been voted in the affirmative, 226 in the negative. The motion fails. The question before the House is the majority committee report is uh, ought to pass as amended on House Bill 1589. The chair recognizes once again the member from Hart's location, Representative Butler, to be in opposition to the motion. Thank you again, Madam Speaker, and honored colleagues. The amendment um, is a step uh, in a, a direction that I think we need to go, but as I've said before, not now. If you'll notice in the amendment, there would be three members of the House and three members, uh, three members of the House uh, who are from the majority and three from the minority, and then one from the Senate. Um, the likely uh, imbalance in that uh, membership, I think, is clear. Also, the language of the amendment uh, steers us towards one outcome. And if we are going to have an open and fair debate on this issue, then we should have an open and fair study commission. So I would urge my colleagues to vote against the OTPA. Let us look at the potential for fair study and uh, bring it to this body at another time. Please vote against this amendment. Thank you. We'll never yield to a question. No. The member does not yield. The question before the House is ought to pass as amended on House Bill 1589. I think I heard a request for a division. This will be a division vote. All members, please take their seats.
Secretary Graham will then expedite to legislate. Representative Chandler moves in expedient to legislate on House Bill 1589. The question before the House is in expedient to legislate on House Bill 1589. A division has been requested. This will be a division vote. Thank you. 